Welcome to Python with Andrew. And today we're going to investigate what is a really hot topic at the moment, and that is chat GPT. Uh, certainly at this time it has uh, been escalating and in the news all over and in a lot of the tech press. So what I thought we would do today is carry on with our theme of Python, but see how we can connect chat GPT uh, into a Python program and start the ball rolling on a few ideas that we could have to make use of that tool uh, within a Python program. And today I'm going to do a very, very simple um, one called uh, making a chatbot using uh, chat GPT. But I'll take you through the steps that we need to do to get set up. And like I said, I'm going to try and do it with the basics first, and we can talk about expanding it later. So there are four steps that we need to do. First of all, we need to open a, an account with OpenAI. That gives us access to uh, chat GPT and access to the uh, API or the application programming interface. So step one, open an account. Step two, get the API key, which is a long string that gives us effectively access to the tool uh, over the internet. It's sort of like our password uh, from our account to using uh, ChatGPT. Then in Python, we need to install the uh, OpenAI package. Uh, and then we're there, we're in Python. And I'll show you one or two of the uh, functions that we need to call or use to get access to uh, either putting a question to chat GPT or getting an answer back. Right? And we're going to simply do a simple you know, question answer uh, process. But let me uh, take you across to um, OpenAI and show you what I mean by opening an account and getting a key. All right. So um, if you go over to openai.com, uh, you'll see you get a screen like this. You can go and use ChatGTP um, interactively, but we don't want to do that. We want to get the API. If you click on API here, uh, you'll be brought to a screen to either log into your account uh, or sign up. Um, so if you don't have an account, sign up. Uh, in my case, I've got an account, so I'm going to log in um, and I should be uh, into it there. So now I'm into the uh, my account, nothing uh, interesting there. But if I go to the drop down, I want to view the API keys. Remember, step two is to get an API key. All right, so I'm going to give that. Now I've already got a, a, a key there, but uh, I could create a new uh, key and copy it across. You'll see that that key is a long string, uh, and you'll see where we stick it into um, in our Python program. So just click on generate the key, copy that, probably put it in, in uh, your text editor straight away, um, and then we're off and running. So that's as simple as it is. Open an account and then get the API um, token, if you like, or the key. And then we're going to uh, head over to um, Python land. Let me get to um, Python here, and uh, I'll make it a little bit bigger. I know, there we go. Um, a lot of people are saying they're using, uh, seeing these videos on mobiles, so it's always good to um, see it quite there. So. Um, I mentioned that the you also need to install the open AI package. Uh, if you don't uh, know how to install, there's plenty of videos on that. But uh, typically, if you um, oops, sorry, go to a new terminal and you can type in, in my case, it's py minus m uh, pip install open AI. Uh, that are my commands. Some people just use the pip because I've got it in their path. Um, I won't do that because I've already installed it. That installs the pack, the module uh, into your environment. Again, I'm using Visual Studio Code, so it's nice and easy. 
Um, so I've already got it there. So I start my uh, program off by import open AI. Right. So, and the next one is I need to, uh, if you like, connect to the API um, with my key. So open AI dot API dot key equals, and guess what? I cannot uh, remember it. So I'm going to copy it from my notepad. That was my key. Obviously, your key will be different to my key. Okay. So now we made the connection. So far, so good. Uh, and all we're going to do is effectively do a call to the uh, chat GPT uh, model and get a response. Okay. And I'm going to do that in a uh, simple question answer. And I'm going to create two functions. Um, get question, um, which is going to say, it's going to ask, um, what is your question? Oh, that's going to ask the person what's their question, but I'm going to put it into that um, function because when we start building it and looping around, uh, it makes it a lot easier to do. And then I'm going to create another one called uh, get def get answer. And that's going to take a question. And in a minute, that's going to call uh, the API. But at the moment, I'm going to just put in a dummy. Okay, so I'm just going to put in that because I want to do my main program um, as quickly as possible. Get question. Oops, sorry, question equals get question. And, um, and I'm going to get answer equals get answer question. Okay. And then I'm going to print the answer. Okay. So I've created a absolutely simple question and answer. I can do it once. Um, and I've created two functions. In a minute, I'm going to expand that. But I thought I'd take and create the framework first, just so I've got it there. And hopefully, if I run this, um, I'll get, uh, let me just clean all that up. Let me run that again. Oh, sorry, I made a mistake there. API, oh, sorry, my mistake. API underscore key, not, uh, there it is, API underscore key. That's why I like to build the framework first because before I, I want to make sure it's working before I put anything uh, important in there. So what is your question? Um, who won the 2015 um, football um, I would it means? Right? And my simple chat does not know. So and, and uh, so not very exciting there. Um, but at least we know our chatbot is working. Now I could put this into a uh, loop, which I'll, I'll cut and paste in a minute. Uh, but more importantly, I want to now call chat GPT and um, if you like, change this get answer. Um, and instead of returning, I don't know what I'm going to do first is I'm going to have the response Open AI um, dot completion dot create. And the two things we need is a model and a question. Okay. That's the basic two things we need. 
I haven't even checked. Maybe even the model might default. Um, the reason why I, I put that as a um, a variable at the moment because I'm going to um, in the future take that out of the uh, out of my function and make it a, a parameter of the function. But um, the model that we're going to use. Hit that. Let me just check my spelling. Text uh, Vinci. Yep. Um, so the way Chat GPT it has a number of models. Very few are available to everyone. This one is a publicly available one, so that's why I'm going to use this. But there are a few other models. And then the simple function call is this create model question. All right. Um, and then it's going to come back with a response. Now, the response is a quite a, uh, a packed dictionary, and I'm not going to go through the detail of the packed dictionary because all I, re all I really want is what was the answer that was given back. All right? And the response um, dot choices zero dot text is the actual text string of the answer. Right? There's plenty of other bits and pieces there. Uh, like I said, we'll touch on that um, another day. So that's pretty well the simple components of improving the answer from I don't know, which was my first go, to, to using chat GPT. So let's see if I, how I go this time. Assuming I've got no errors. What is your question? Um, who won the 2015 men's World Cup? Oh. Uh, of course, I've got a, a mistake there. So let me uh, just pause the video at the moment and I'll just have a look at my mistake. I realize my mistake, and I think it's just being too eager. You actually, uh, because it's a uh, variable set of args, you need to go model equals model and prompt equals question. Okay, so I'm going to give that a try. Yeah, we're off and running there. Let me start again. What is your question? Let me try again. Who won the 2015 men's football And uh, it doesn't say who. Uh, let's see if I can. Oops. It didn't get cut off, I think. Let me see if I can. No, it didn't give me the full answer. Didn't even tell me who de defeated, but it did tell me who who won. So that that's good. Uh, so you can see it's far better than uh, obviously my answer. Now we can use this in all sorts of ways. Now, we, we, if I run it again, um, write me a poem about Python. Oh, well, here's an interesting point. I've specified to only give me a short uh, response uh, because I haven't filled that in my response. So uh, I, I do need to expand that if I want a lot more uh, information. All right. And at the moment, I've only got it set to about eight words or something like that. So uh, that's a bit of a mistake, but I can, I can fix that. And where we fix that um, is, and I'm going to make this a bit bigger, there's a whole heap of different in fact uh, let me quiet let me get um I'll copy them across
All right. So, excuse my bad formatting, but um, you can see that I've got um, a couple of other uh, variables. I'm not going to explain them other than this one here was the main one, 1024, which should give me the uh, ability to get much longer answers um, than uh, before. Uh, so, but you can see that there's a lot more parameters, and that is on the uh, Open a API website. Uh, the only one you really need in this case, if you want longer answers, uh, is this max token. So hopefully now, if I write me a poem, hopefully it'll give me something a bit longer. There you go. So you can see it's given me a lot uh, bigger answer. So if I wanted short answers, I think the default for max tokens is only about eight. So uh, you can make it to 1,024. I think the maximum is 2,048. Um, but that gives you an idea of uh, what we can do. So quite quickly, we've been able to um, import it, put the key in, and do one function call to get chat GPT to give us our answer. Now, where do we take it from here? Well, we can take it uh, in a lot of different ways. Um, I've only shown you one question, one answer, and I've only done it where very, very simple. There's no loop, etc. So if I wanted to make this a real chat bot, uh, I would want to put loops uh, in uh, here. So I might do something like, um, you know, while question is not equal to stop, carry on, ask question, answer, question, answer, question, answer. Um, I also think the best way of using this sort of thing is to put it in context rather than just give me any question in the world. This is going to be really useful if you set a program to say, I'm going to help you uh, generate marketing messages for um, your website or marketing messages for a product. Um, so zero, zero right down. And then you're more likely to make it uh, more enhanced for that particular uh, case. The good thing about chat GPT is that it is non-deterministic. In other words, if I ask the same question again, it would give me um, pretty well a different answer, not, not so much a different answer, a different way of answering the same thing. Uh, you can change and alter that. Um, to make it more deterministic, but I like the fact that uh, it's non-deterministic. Um, because if you think about it, if I, you ask 10 people to write a poem, they would write it differently, and I like that. Okay, so just summarizing, this is going to be a hot topic um, in the short term and medium term. How can we bring it into Python and what sort of things can we put into our programs? Or can we build an app uh, using this sort of technique um, to help people in certain areas. And very, very simple to do. Have an OpenAI account, get a key, and import uh, OpenAI, and then do this function call uh, openai.completion.create. Uh, um, as I said, I only use some of the basic inputs, and I only use one of the outputs. There's a lot to explore, and I do recommend you uh, explore it in the OpenAI website. Uh, that's about it for now. Uh, I'm going to be doing a few more on this sort of topic over the, the next uh, few bit of time and uh, hope you join me. Thanks a lot.